Hello, my, hello, Michael Sachs TV, Neil I see and Dave. Dave, uh, great to have you on. Um, going to talk about a bit about Charlton. I mean, chances created, not being clinical enough, and we pay a price for it. I think. Yeah, there was uh, there wasn't much created at all. Um, very disappointing. Um, we had a lot of possession, which um, you know, we don't normally have uh, the stats in our favour possession-wise, but we, we had the better of the possession by far on Saturday, but we just couldn't do anything with it. It was it was just frustrating to watch. It was knocking it about and getting to the final third, and there's just no creativity at all. No one seems to have any idea what they want to do with the ball. The, the passing in, the, the crosses into the box were not, are not good enough. Um, I think some of the running off the ball as well, that's... Uh, Something we're lacking in. They just you, you can watch Charlton run, players running around when they're when they're off when they're not got the ball, mm-hmm. where when they're making breaks, they've got players running left, right, and centre. And I just seem to stand around and wait for the ball to come to them. It's um, it, no one seems to know what they're doing. It's it's almost like playground football at times. Watching that, I mean, you just stand there and open up someone passes to you, mm-hmm. and um, you know, I know the strikers have been slated in the last couple of weeks for not scoring, but. You know, it's difficult scoring if you're not getting chances set up for you, and that's what the midfield's for. And you know, apart from Phillips, um, we seem to be really lacking in the middle at the moment. You know, Connell's good down the left. Um, you know, if he can improve his balls into the box, then that's going to be a plus. But then the players need to get into the box to be there. They, you know, you need to have someone in the six-yard box when the ball comes in, challenging the goalkeeper. You know, winning the ball. But no one seems to be bothered to do, to bother to do that. It's just. Like you say, they don't have any idea where they're supposed to be positioned. They don't seem to know where the ball is going to go. There doesn't seem to be any sort of like plan or, or setup. It's you know, it's almost like pre-season. No one knows, you know, how every everyone plays, and um, there's no gel in there at all. It's just it's, they're like a team strangers. They just don't mm. they don't seem to bond with each other. I, I don't know what the, what the problem is. It's it's just it's difficult to watch. And it's you know it's it's hard on fans that have travelled all that way and paid all that money to go watch a team that really doesn't seem to have much of a clue what they're doing. Yeah, I mean, one of the things as well for me is like injuries, picking up injuries. Josh Benson at six to eight week. Um, you know, Tom Edwards has gone back to Stoke. So in certain areas, it looks like Jordan Williams went to central defence. We got Benson playing at uh, right wing back role again. It's not ideal, but. I think about like highlight some uh, weaknesses in in squad, and we'll come on to that in a bit. For me, for goals, it seemed to be like you said a bit earlier. Stats were in our favour, which is a rarity about shots and corners, but we didn't take him. We didn't take his chances. Yeah, we crossbarred and and all that. But again, you you can't be ruining chances like that. Uh, you know, clear off a line and stuff. If if you're having double figures of corners and double figures of shots on target, uh, shots, sorry, you need to be making them count at least one. For me, when we were attacking, we were like leaving us an exposed, and like you said, Veer with Charlton, they tend to prey on that and just like suck it up, suck it up, and all of a sudden, bang, ball and bare, bare pace were just murdering us down. You know, both win back positions and that's what fan want him. We played into, you know, we're trying to take a game to him, but in the same respect, you've got to be still switched on and not be naive enough to leave spaces for them to, it, you know, run into it. Um, going into Charlton game, uh, sorry, going off at Charlton game, into Accrington game. We played Accrington 1-1, one, 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 obviously, you know, we all know what surrounding that. We're not mentioning about referees and that. On Boxing Day, um, what kind of response would you be looking at for Dave against uh, Ch- uh, Accrington? Uh, the same sort of response I was looking for after the the Bolton game. The same sort of response after the Derby game, but mm. nothing seems to change. It's you know the the last three three games have been you know pretty much the same. All right, um, you know Derby, Bol- uh, Derby and Bolton. We didn't have as much possession. You know that's the only positive you can take from the last game is that we had more possession, but. Then on the flip side, you've got the fact that we didn't do anything with it, and we just mm. don't look like scoring. That's the problem. You know, it's you can say we're unlucky with the the shots that have hit the bar, and you know, having shots cleared off the line. But how many games have we gone without scoring? You can't be unlucky. You know, for three mm. or four games, you just you need to put your chances away, and we're just not doing that. 
And yeah, there's, no, there's not, we struggle for clear cut chances as well. Mm. It's, you know, and when we do get into the opposition box, we just try and walk it in all the time. Mm. And that was a big problem against Chart. And those people stood around us and they were all saying exactly the same thing. You know, why is, why are we not having a shot? Yeah. You know, we have long range efforts, but then you've got efforts <clears> where you just get into the 18 yard box. And, um, you know, a good striker will have an, have, you put an attempt to goal from there. You don't try and walk it into the six yard box and, you know, take it past there. You take your chance when you've got, got it. Don't leave it too late because but then you're going to get a smother. The keeper comes out, the defenders get back, the chance is gone. And that's, we just seem to be taking far too long and just not making the right decision when we could, passing it, shooting. We just seem to dwell on the ball for far too long. And it's, you know, and by the time we decide what to do with it, then, you know, the opposition's caught up with us and, you know, we, um, possessions recycled back to them and we're on the back foot again. Yeah, I mean, I get where you're coming from with that. It's like you say, you're looking for responses, you're looking, you know, to see what we can do. And yeah, creating chances is fine. But when you, you're missing guilt, everyone's, like you said, they're trying to walk it in and trying to overcomplicate things. Like once you're in, a, you know, in, in box, have a go. Especially in this kind of weather. This is what I don't get is like wet, wet, tricky conditions. If you have a, a pop at goal and, you know, goalkeeper in Paris, it squirms, it can pop out. But for me, Ben, I'd be looking at who's there to follow up on second ball and we had that person in box for there. And like you said earlier, they seem to be off it. It's like they're waiting for something to happen rather than anticipating something to happen. So, again, chances missed, chances ruled. We, if it had probably come away with, two, you know, a draw 2-2 two, two at Charlton, it had been a result. And he could have said, yeah, not too bad. But, again, I think it kind of highlights and it probably masks up where we are in the league at minute. Yeah, but it's still in playoffs. I get that. But you look at the fixtures coming up, we've got some big sides coming to work well. No disrespect to Accrington. I think Accrington can be a tricky game. Uh, it, it, for me, it's going to be like a, a Cheltenham or a, a Morecambe Fleetwood kind of game. They're going to come. They're not, it's going to be... They're not going to let us play in Dictator's game. They're going to be... Yeah, they're, they're going to be happy if they went with a draw. Accrington, there's no there's no two bones about that. But then it's down to us to take the game to them. And like you said earlier, Dave, what is what is what is going to be our plan to to counter that? I mean, I don't know. I, I really I'm 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 in bit in two minds with this where if we go if it don't start as what we want to do, I can just see his game more frustrated as as game goes on on this one, mate. Well, we've not put in a decent performance that I've seen since the the Peterborough game. Mm. You know, when was that start of December? Mm. You know, we came up to what six six weeks since then, six seven mm. weeks, and you know the the Accrington game was poor. You know, we, again we should have we should have put our chances away in that game in the first half. It should have been dead and yeah. buried, but you know it, 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 we didn't. And then there was that. <laughs> Yellow card for Connell, and he ended up having to go off. Mm. And uh, the second half, we just didn't turn up. Um, then there was uh, the Fleetwood game I didn't see, so I uh, can't really mm. comment on that. But I, I heard it was pretty much all the same, and you know we're fortunate to come away with the three points from that one. Mm. Uh, the Bolton game, all right. There was the the, the penalty and the red card, you know, in, t- in the first ten minutes, which probably dictated how that game went. Um, so it's difficult to say, but we didn't look capable of doing anything pretty much after mm. after Mads had got sent off. The Derby game, I thought we started off well. Um, but again, we couldn't take the chances. We had a few chances in the first 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. But after that, you know, it was all Derby again. And yeah, then the Charlton game, it was you know, we sat off again well and I I felt pretty pretty positive, but you know, even though we kept the you know, the momentum going for the like 15, 20 minutes this time, we just didn't do anything with it, you know, and we need to, we need to make things happen. You know, you know we've mentioned, you know, players expecting things to happen, waiting for things to happen. We need to make things happen. We can't mm. just, and like you say, we're still in the playoffs, but playing like this, it's not like that, not with like that for much longer because you know, it's just going to drop, you know, heads are dropping. You can see there's no confidence in the team at the moment. Uh, the injuries we're picking up to key players, um, 
players possibly going in the transfer window. Let's talk about Williams going to Preston. I'm not sure if that's still on the mm-hmm. cards, but you know we've the, the, the squad's thread threadbare at the moment, and you know, with these injuries and if players are going to go as well, I I just can't see us getting out of this. I really can't. We've been linked mm-hmm. with these new players. I don't know a lot about them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've heard good things about this lad from Burnley. Um, Opie comes in in central defence. I think um, he needs to come in and you know show what he can do. I'd like to see um, I'd like to see him come in for kitchen for a bit because he just worries me. And he was he was out of position on Saturday, and then he's losing his head, and he's he's always chops off at the referee. He just worries me, Kitchen. He looks like he could get sent off every single game, and he, he makes rash challenges. You know, players get past him too easily. So his first half a season with us, I thought he was a cracking sign and he made some brilliant challenges. Yeah. And he just seems to have gone off the boil. He just doesn't seem to have picked it up. He likes getting forward too much. And then there's we're left open at the back then. He doesn't get back in time. You know, it's I just, I think we need a calm head at the back. And you know, we've got Mads, but he needs someone to play with, like when he had Helic. They both, you know, cool and calm at the back. I think Kitchen's just a little bit too rash, and I think he needs, you know, some time out of the game. To sort of like calm himself down, reevaluate the player he is, because he's he, he can play much better than what he does at the moment. We've seen mm-hmm. what he can do, mm-hmm. but he just he just seems to have lost that at the moment. And we, we need we need that defense showing up because it looks really dodgy, really dodgy. You know, we always look like we're going to concede, and if we're going to concede and we're not going to score, then there's only one way we're going to go in the league, and that's down. Just on, on a bad place, picking up from where you're coming from. I mean, we've had a well. A couple of arrivals, Bobby Thomas, so you're on about from Burnley, mm-hmm. uh, Barry Cotter and Max Waters as well. So two defenders and a striker. Um, again, I don't know, you know, it sounds like what's been coming out in media, what's been said at press conference about earlier on, is that Barry Cotter and Max Waters are a, a bit off pace due to not playing mounted team uh, games and that. So again, it's not a, although you'd like to see a, <laughs> player come in straight into the first team that's you know it's going to take a bit of speed to get up to but again we need him to come in like now uh, Bobby Thomas again Duff knows a part apparently when he was at under 23s so he knows the kind of character what it Bristol Rovers I think were on loan it yeah because it's short didn't they so and he, he come here so again I get where you're coming from it need, for me defence needs sorting out and shoring up and getting back I think at time when it were game, not thinking about we, but we're trying to. I think we're trying to sort out the best unit, and I know Vokundi were in, then McCarthy. But I think when Edwards, Mads, and uh, Kitchen were at back three, it looked like they had some kind of bit of an understanding. But with Edwards picking up his injury and now gone, it seems to be back to oh, we're going to pick to make sure it's it, it's like a bit of tinkering about and. This stage of season, the second half, like now, nah, you can't really afford to be messing about with stuff like that. I mean, Max Watters, he came on for half an hour at Charlton. He couldn't really tell much about what what he could bring. Apparently, he's you know he's got decent reviews. He, you know he knows where back in is, I think last year, uh, MK Duns. I think it were eleven appearances, five goals. So that kind of ratio, you you take that all day long, wouldn't you? Well, he looked up for it when he came on Saturday. You know, he looked up for for the challenge, but you know, again, it was the ball coming through to him. He was, they were like, he was having to drop deeper and try and make things for himself. And you know, you want your you want your forwards to get up front and mm. you know the midfielders to, to to do the work and get the balls into him. But you know, you're never gonna. It's he's restricted to long distance shots. You know, twenty yards plus because mm. it, it there's just nothing between. Well, the, mid, the midfield to me is pretty much non-existent at the moment. You know, you've got you know you've got Connell on the left, as I've said, and um, Phillips buzzes around, but he's not. He's I think Phillips is more like a attacking midfield. Do we need someone in the middle? Do you think it'll make a difference if Thomas came back in? It will make a difference, yeah. Hmm. You know, and I think um, I think he's a kind of a player a bit like Phillips in in a way. I think he's um, they're both attacking midfielders. I think we just need someone in the middle to hold the ball. You know, like um what was the guy we had from Leicester? Matty Matty James. Matty James. Just someone that can 
get the ball, look around and pick that pass, pick the best pass. Because at the moment, we haven't got anybody in the middle that can, that can distribute the ball like that. You know, Kane, he, he's not a... I find Kane frustrating. He seems to... He seems to be all over the park, but he doesn't seem to be there in the middle, sort of like... I. Some of his mm. passing, I think, he's got the capability of getting the balls and distributing it, but he's not in the right position for it. Mm. You know, he's pushing forward or he's getting back deep. You know, it's I don't think we've got a problem with playing the ball out from the back. You know, I don't, don't think he needs to drop back into the into the defence and bring the ball out because you can get the ball into midfield, not a problem. Mm. If he held it more in midfield and then picked up the ball around about the centre circle, pushed forward a little bit and then looked for options left, right and centre... You know, then that's that's the sort of player we need, and I think he's the best capable of doing it in our team. But you know, it's this is shape. It's pretty much non existence at the moment. It's that everyone seems to be all over the place. No one knows where they're supposed to be, and that's our biggest problem. If we can get some shape, and we can keep our shape throughout the game. Then, you know, we're going to make chances for Watters. He, you know, we looked at Fritz. He's obviously got a good record at this level, mm. and um, all right, he's not fit, which is frustrating but you know you've got to we've got him now so you've got to give him a chance and um substitution appearances are going to do it for the first couple of games so they can get back up to badge fitness and then assess him from there see what he's doing in training you know maybe start him see what he's like and yeah but midfield it's just it's, it's what worries me i just i just don't see us creating anything that's the problem and we've just been restricted to Long range shots, and yeah, you know we've we've it's coming to that end, that time of the season now where we can, we, if we go on a run, we can stay where we are, you know, playoff areas. And if if we go on about if we continue this this slump we're on now, then you know it's it's going to be too late. I personally didn't think at the start of the season we'd finish any higher than ninth or tenth. Mm. So we're overachieving for me at the moment. I don't think we've had a particularly great season football wise. You know we've had some good results. But we haven't been consistent. We've mm. struggled at, at time times. We need to learn how to play against teams like Accrington. You know, we can play against the good teams because they play football. We like to play football, but it's the we need to get our heads around teams like I don't like saying teams like, but yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's what Liverpool used to struggle with in the Premier League. They used to be mm. able to go out and put in good performances and get results against <clears> the top teams, <throat> and they struggle against like your Stokes and your Burnleys and all that. You need to learn how to, you know, beat any team in that league, and I think it's why teams last in they're going to get relegated from the championship to League One. They have trouble getting out because they just don't know how to play. Like against. adapt to yeah, different game situations. Yeah, because you got. I mean, if you look at the top of League One now, I mean, most teams up around there have got pretty much mostly Championship experience, you know, or higher. Really, you've got Premier League experience as well. Mm. But your team's lower down. You you don't know how to play around, and they they don't like they don't try playing nice football. They just go in there and you know mm. heavy challenges. They just you know go hell bent for leather, and it's the, their enthusiasm and their motivation that you know grinds them out results. It's not the the fact that they're playing good football, mm. and you know sometimes we have to play ugly football to get results. But we just play the same style against every team, and we don't seem to have a plan B. You know, you can play decent football against, you know, Derby County, Sheffield Wednesday. And, um, you know, we got a good result at Hillsborough. But then you, you can't play that style of football against your teams like Accrington and Fleetwood and Morecambe because it just doesn't work. And we've, we've proved it time and time again this season, it doesn't work. So we need, we need to have a plan B. And like on Saturday when things weren't going our way, we you know we went 2-0 down. Didn't have a plan B then. It was literally, well, we'll chuck some subs on and see what happens. There was nothing changed. It was just mm. different personnel doing exactly the same thing. Yeah, good point about about game. You know, adaptation against different sides. Like I said, teams what's down via via the Barts in league and league one via the kind of ground results are and trying to stop other teams from playing football. Um, and good analysis what you were on about there, Dave, is that teams what have had Premier League stroke Championship experience as well. They kind of find it hard to adapt, and when you look, look like look back at Liverpool's against Stokes and, and stuff like that, it, it is, and it's like a, a game mentality. And it's it's not that I think us as fans, I mean, I'm going to come to what, what 
you know, your score predictions in a minute. But, you know, you be, for me, as a band fan, I'd be looking at this, I'm thinking we should be winning this 3-0, uh, 3-1, 3-0. But again, that's when you look at it as a fan, but as, as a team, as a, as a as, you know, as players go on pitch, they'll just, it's a job for them, I get that. But us as fans like to say, oh, it's only Accrington, we should, we should be winning this. But when you look at bigger picture, they could set up shop and say, right, we're going to play one up front. We're going to just sit back, eat your own break. And if we come away with a nil-nil, we're happy as a, as a team. We're going back with, with a point. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. score predictions for Accrington game coming on to it, Van Dave. What are you going for? Um, I just can't see a score. That's the problem. And, mm. you know, like you just said, then they're going to come up and their plan's going to, probably going to be play one up front, hit us on the break. Mm. And if they can hit us on the break and, you know, get a goal, then they know we're going to struggle to score because, yeah. you know, we haven't scored since for the Fleetwood game, was it last time we, we scored? Mm-hmm. Mm. And, you know, confidence is low. They, they, they'll, they'll see our form. They'll, they'll watch the highlights of the games. Mm. They'll know exactly what to do. Um, I'm going to have to be as positive as I can. And... Um, I'm going to go for a nil-nil. Nil-nil. Mm. I just think, and I'd like to hope, that we've worked on his set pieces, because I think his corners and his free kicks could we could be a lot more dangerous with Ike, what we've got in this squad, in this team, sorry. We've got Ike there, but just don't seem to be, for me, for me anyway, we don't seem to be taking his chance and capitalising on, on that against his team's um, amount. I mean, I think it, well, we were in double figures in corners, and I don't think Charlton had one, but away from home you should be at least putting goalkeeper under pressure or at least doing something with it but it's like you said mm. it's predictable we put it up there same thing if it's not working try something try a shot try a front post try a near but but we're not but it's just going to the same thing all time and time i'm gonna say i want to i said three one i'm gonna say three one but i'd take i'd take two note but my only concern is if Accrington do sit deep and we take a chance and it goes in, it'll be hard for us because all season we have not come back from one goal down. We have not come back from mm. from going one note down all season. We have not come back, and it's like that's my worry. If especially at home, especially at home as well, I don't know how many Accrington are going to be fetching. Um, I can't see it being many, and again, I just. I just want Oakwell not to be getting disgruntled even more so because a known game, you should be taking, making your, we keep saying it all cliche, making Oakwell a fortress and all this kind of stuff. But against teams like Accrington, and I'm not being disrespectful, but your Fleetwoods and your Morecams and your Chelt, we should be taking leaf out of your top, top sides and saying, look, you're going to find it hard when you come here. You know you're going to be in a game, but we don't. Sometimes we seem to roll over. Wickham game, a prime example, earlier on its season. And people are saying, oh, we're losing to Wickham, look at them for 22nd in the league. They're a few points off from top spot now. Mm. And you got to, and people seem to forget that they, you know, Ainsworth didn't get to Wembley for now. So he knows what it takes to get results at home and away in this league. And this is what we've got to adapt to, like what you were saying, Dave, earlier. Yeah, you can play your, you know, your Sheffield Wednesday, your, your Plymouths, and your teams up there all day long. But at the end of the day, you've got to take on such as your Burtons, your Morecams, your Exeters, and they're not givens. And this league, you've got to earn the right. And I think sometimes, kind of a bit complacent and think, yeah, well, but when we, you know, fan wanting, it seems to be panic, 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 or what we're going to be doing. And yeah, it, it seems to, Indira is more than helpers, I think. So, so Dave, it's been great having you on, mate. Um, who do you think, then, just before we go, Dave, who do you think will be his most, in, mo, yeah, mo, uh, yeah, most important key influential player on day against Hackington, then? Um, key player for me is Adam Phillips. He just looks, you know, he looks like he, he can make something happen. You know, mm. it's... I know he struggled with injuries and illnesses and, you know, he's, but he needs players around him to help him as well. But yeah. I think he's, he's the player to look, look for, you know, he can, he can, 
Yeah, he's, he's 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 scored the the goals a lot of the goals for us this season that have that have got us the good results. You know, he got the winner at Peterborough. And he just pops up and mm. he looks like he can. He, he's the one that looks more like getting a goal than anybody else because mm. you know he he can hit it from distance. He's not afraid to have a go. Um, he just needs a bit more backup. You know, we need you know the players to support him more and. I think he's the one, if anybody, that can, you know, get us up and running. Mm. And um, you know, that's what we need. We need a leadership sort of player. No disrespect to Mads, but mm. he's not a captain for me. Mm. Um doesn't do enough shouting, you know, he doesn't lose it when things are bad. He needs to sort of like wear his heart on his sleeve a little bit more and you know, get him G'd up. There was no there was nothing like that on Saturday, which was disappointing for me. Mm. And um I just think Adam Adam Phillips looks, looks like the sort of player that could, you know, get the troops going and you know, say, "Come on, look, this isn't good enough. Let's get something sorted. Let's get this done right. Let's get a goal." And you know, all it's going to take is a goal and a yeah. bit of confidence back, and and there you go. But um, as I say, he needs to make that step up, and I think he's a, the player that can do it. Yeah. Uh... I'm going to go for a midfielder, but it's going to be Luke, uh, Luke Connell. Um, I just think that he tries to fetch ball out from defence and tries to get things going. And you can see he's, he's wanted to do it best. I just think that he's going to be key in this, trying to dictate play, uh, being taking corners and free kicks, because it seems to be the hub of that. Uh, and I'm hoping we can kind of get the best out of him. I get where you're coming from with Mads. We need a not dictator, but we need someone a bit more vocal, a bit more uh, what can drag you up when you're down kind of thing. Um, but you were going for Adam Phillips, and like I said, VA seems to be like a bit of a go sometimes. All of a sudden, he's in game and he pops up in his, mm. his, uh, his uh, you know, his VA. Right place at the right time. Uh, I'm going for Luke O'Connell. Like I said, VA trying to dict- play, dict- dictate play, sorry. And obviously, with free kicks and con- you know, corners, because that's what his forte is at the minute. So, Dave, it's been a pleasure having you on, mate. Thanks um, for let us know your thoughts in comments below. Um, score predictions, who's going to be our most influential player on the on the day? We need to win. We need to win at home, get things going again. Um, let's try and make Oakwell a fortress. One thing left to say, you Reds. <laughs>